This is a quick tutorial on how to use the OpenSea.io marketplace. I'm going to show you how to find a Decentraland item. I'm going to just look for Decentraland wearables. And this would be the selection I would make now normally. However, I would just like to point out that there is also the Decentraland lands that you can filter for and the Decentraland names. But let's go with Decentraland wearables for now. It will filter through the database and return to us just Decentraland wearables. Now, usually this is listed per default to recently listed, and I think this is the best possible view because the best deals, if you're looking for deals, are usually listed on top as people keep on reducing the price or updating the listings. And these are moved back to the top. So this is the best starting selection. However, if you would like to filter for, let's say lowest price, this might not be the best view to start with. So it really depends on the situation. It also depends on the market situation. Sometimes it does make sense to filter for lowest price. I think for the most part, you just stick with the recently listed and you start looking at the first entries here. Let's say the first 12 rows will probably give you a good overview of the current market situation. Now, if you need to filter further, and sometimes you do want to do that, you will need to scroll down here and have a look at the options that are available here. So what you might want to do is to only select listings that are denominated in Ethereum. You could do that. And you could also just look for base mail items. This will filter the selection quite significantly. And now you may want to look at only eyewear. Now, as you can see, the selection is getting smaller and smaller. Now here you will see that you also have non-eyewear showing up. And the reason for that is that these are bundles and in these bundles, there is eyewear included. If you would like to remove these bundles, you will have to go here to all items and select single items only. And this will, you know, give you a very nice overview of potential candidates that you might want to, you know, add to your NFT portfolio. So now let's see what, all the, what other options we have. So if you're familiar with Decentraland, you're likely to recognize some of these here and you may want to directly navigate to a particular collection. So we can just give it a try for the sake of, of this tutorial. Why don't we, let's say we pick the community contest here, boom. Well, we do have one last option here is the rarity type. And some of you might decide that you only want to buy mythic items or legendary items. And we can actually, you know, filter for legendary, let's say. So right now on OpenSea.io, you have the six items listed for sale in Ethereum. I do want to buy an item here. I will have to change the selection, however. But one thing I want to mention here is that there is also a Decentraland marketplace here on the Decentraland.org website. And the listings that you see here do not reflect the listings that you see here. These are two separate marketplaces. And here you will buy everything in mana, whereas here you have a selection of currencies, but mostly it's Ethereum that you pay with. So these are two different places. And a lot of the times the selection of items on OpenCIO is you know, much larger and much more liquid, whereas here it's a small selection of items and very often they are a little bit more expensive, sometimes they're much more expensive because the liquidity here is uh, much lower. So before you buy items here, make sure to check out the OpenSea. This is an important mention. I think many people starting out do not realize that there is this difference and sometimes they overpay for items that they could have gotten a little bit cheaper here, sometimes a lot cheaper. And I think there is also a significant difference in the fees. So it definitely for now makes sense to learn how to use the OpenSea platform, even though at first it seems a little bit overwhelming. Actually, once you get into it, it's quite straightforward and not that fast. Now, you will need, of course, to have a MetaMask account and you will need to create an account with OpenSea, meaning you, you, you sign in and then you can fill out your, your profile. And uh, eventually, if you have a positive balance, you can actually buy an item. And this is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to clear all filters. And hopefully the item I want is still available. Now you will see that I'm seeing other NFTs from other projects here now, and I will need to go back and 
filter for the central and wearables again. However, this time I'm going to try to buy this item here. For the sake of this demonstration, I think it's an interesting item that I do not have in my collection. I'm looking here at the individual listing. So it's basically just under $45. It's, it's a mint 27 out of 100, meaning that this item was brought into this world as number 27. What's important to know here, some old school users pay a lot of attention to these mint numbers. So if you have a mint number that is relatively low, one, two, maybe even three, this item will have you know a little bit more value than the regular items. And sometimes you know the 100 out of 100 or the 10 out of 10 will also have a little bit more value. But you know it's a very subjective way of seeing things. It's a way of providing some more detail in a very liquid NFT market. Right now the market is somewhat dormant. But once it starts to pick up again, some of these additional features will, will help in the price discovery of all of these items. So do pay attention to some of these. I have some of my favorite <laughs> mint numbers that I like to pay attention to, but this has no relevance to the actual price, in my opinion, in, in larger terms of things. So here you will have some of the details about the item. Is it for female or male characters? Sometimes there is a difference here that it's only for female characters, for example. So do pay attention to that. You will also see from which collection it is and the rarity type. And uh, this is pretty straightforward here. And for those guys who, who want to do a little bit more of chain analysis, you have the contract address here and the token ID. And I think an interesting component is also the trading history. I don't think it's super reliable, but it gives you an idea of who owned the item, how it came into existence, who was the first person to own it, and you have a bit of a history. So I think sometimes this gives you a bit of a clue if, if an item is well-priced or if it's uh, priced under market. So yeah, I think this is what you need to know here. Sometimes you will have a look at the listings area here because for very liquid NFTs, you might have other sellers who, who are selling at a better price and you would be able to see it here. Now for this relatively illiquid item, you don't have any other sellers. And right now you don't have any offers from any other users. So I think I'm going to buy this item and let's see how that works. So I'm gonna click the buy button, check out. It will now launch my MetaMask wallet. And uh, it basically tells me that the gas fees are a little bit lower than for the rest of the week. So I mean, it's still quite a lot, but I think uh, right now this is a great opportunity to buy something if you want to. So in total, this is the amount of Ethereum I will spend, including the initial amount plus gas fees. And if I uh, click on confirm, it takes a little bit of time and hopefully this will eventually go through and I will be able to see this item inside my store, my profile. And you will see that this item has now been added to my wallet.